That's how it works. So today we learned about federalism. What is federalism? Hold on, Davis. Let's give someone else a chance this time. Mary? Uh, the Chinese government? No. Ben? The Euro government? No. Davis? Federalism is a system of government in which sovereignty is constitutionally divided between a central governing authority and a constituent political units like states or provinces. I mean, we have it in America, guys. Come on. Correct. Well, since only one person has grasped this concept, the rest of you get to write a paper this weekend to discover federalism for yourselves. I want it to be about how federalism is present in your daily lives. <sighs> have a good weekend. Saturday. I have no idea what I'm going to do about this federalism project. I need some help on this one. It sure is a good thing I got geeks on speed dial. Hey, this is Ben from class. Uh, we have that federalism paper to do that's due Monday. I wonder if you could come over and help me. I know you Good. I'll be at your house in like an hour. Oh, and by the way, that news I hear in the background oh. has to do with federalism too. The uh, FCC, federal agency, regulates the airways. So, uh, see you then. Bye. So what's the deal with fellas, and why is it so special? Okay. Well, as you know, we're quite a big country, and during the time when email wasn't even dreamt of for the future, we couldn't communicate very fast. It would have taken a long time for information to get to and from that central government. So federalism allows functions to be shared between the central government and the state governments. But today, communication is pretty fast. What specific benefits do we get from the federal system? Well, many of our presidents have started as state governors. It pretty much gives them, like, a training ground. It's like they're running a small country of their own. So the states have been a testing ground for new government incentives. This can be seen in air pollution control in California. How do states get the money from the federal government to carry out these plans? Member from class? The central government gives grants to states. There are two types of grants, block and categorical. In block grants, the funds are given for a specific area, but it is up to the states to design and implement the programs. Block grants are more broad than our categorical grants. When the national government decides precisely what the funds can be used to accomplish, these are called categorical grants. The national government uses federal mandates to specify the terms of categorical grants. These mandates tell the state how the money will be used. Ben, have you gone to the store yet? Hey, right, let's go. Pay close attention to everything you see, and you will find that government is related to almost everything. For example, these products are regulated by the federal government to ensure safety. If you buy food, it has been inspected by the U.S. Department of Agriculture. When you check out, you will pay taxes. The ability to tax falls under concurrent powers. These are powers that are shared between the levels of government. Some of the powers that the federal government has are regulating interstate commerce, declaring war, printing currency, controlling imports and exports, and foreign policy. As described in the Tenth Amendment, the Constitution spells out the enumerated powers of the federal government and leaves the remaining powers to the states. The state's powers include the regulation of intrastate commerce, providing for state militia, and making laws that are not prohibited by the U.S. Constitution nor expressly delegated to the national government. Four score and one year ago, my political science teacher gave me an assignment that sparked my interest in the American federal system. Now, my vice president and I will make education a top priority so that our children will have the same opportunity that I have. Federalism.